Welcome back, Parasite. So today I'm making my video a little different, and I sound a little different because I'm still sick. So it's all good though. All right. So today is going to be integer and rational exponent. So first thing we're going to do is talk about vocabulary. This is something you should already know, but in case you forgot, it's a little review. Integer is just a whole number, like one, two, three, four, five. An irrational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction. For example, 3 over 2. So today we're going to be focusing on those different types of exponents. Exponents that are integers and exponents that are rational numbers. So let's start off with exponents that are integers. But I want to specifically focus on a negative exponent. Okay, so what happens when you have a negative exponent? So let's give some examples. So if you have... For example, x raised to the negative 1, that just means that we're going to make it into a fraction. So whenever you have a negative as an exponent, it means fraction. That's 1 over x raised to the 1, but I'm not going to write raised to the 1 because we usually never write x in the first. Alright, so let's give another example. If I have x raised to the negative 2, that's the same thing as having 1 over x squared. So all it does is it turns into a fraction. Everything else stays the same. Now what happens when you have a coefficient in front? So let's say we have 2 times x raised to the negative 2. So for this one, think about it as of like what's actually happening. You have the 2 times the x raised to the negative 2. You know how to deal with the x raised to the negative 2. It's just a fraction, which is 1 over x squared. And then multiply across. Think of the 2 having a 1 under it. Multiply across. 2 times 1 gives me 2 at the top. 1 times x squared gives me x squared at the bottom. And that's your final answer. Okay? You never want to have a negative exponent. So whenever they give you negative exponents, turn it into a fraction. Alright. That's all with negative exponents. The next thing, we're going to deal with rational numbers as exponents. So, before we even get to that, I do want to go over how to rewrite radicals. So, first thing, when you have the square root of x, that's the same thing as writing x to the one half. Now, if you don't believe me, try... To put, instead of the square root of 4 on the calculator, which you know is 2, I want you to write 4 raised to the 1 half. You should be getting 2. It should be exactly the same thing because they mean the same. Alright. So, now some radicals have a number right in front of it. So, like if you have a 3, that's just the cube root. So, that's the same thing as x raised to the 1 over 3. If you have a 4 in front of it, that's called the fourth root, which is the same thing as x raised to the 1 over 4. And so on and so on. I could have a 6 in front. That'll be the sixth root, which is the same thing as x raised to the 1 over 6. All right, now let's get to something more complicated. So whenever they give you fractions, as your exponent, it means it's going to be some type of radical. So let's try this example. I want you to rewrite 4 raised to the 3 halves. Now there's different ways you can rewrite it. But we want to kind of rewrite it in the simplest form, in a form that it looks the nicest. So part of it is not just rewriting, but simplifying. I don't know if I spelled that right. Let's go with sure. Why not? Okay. So let's say 4 raised to the 3 halves. Now a lot of you guys are going to go crazy here and be like, I don't know what to do. There's a 3 at the top, but there's a 2 at the bottom, and I don't know what else to do. Okay. So we're going to separate it step by step. First thing that I want you to do is separate the fraction. So the 4 stays the same. And instead of having a 3 over 2, we're going to separate the top and the bottom. So it's going to be 3 over 1 times 1 over 2. Now just check yourself and think, okay, 
this is my side work just to check if I did that correctly 3 over 1 times 1 over 2 multiplying fractions that means I'm multiplying across so 3 times 1 gives me 3 1 times 2 gives me 2 I do end up with a 3 halves so I'm okay All right after that I like to choose which one I'm gonna deal with first you can deal with whichever you want first so let's say I want to deal with the 3 over 1 first so I'm gonna put the 3 of my exponent inside of my parentheses 3 over 1 is the same thing as 3 so I'm just gonna write 3 and on the outside I'm gonna write the next part which is the 1 half now your exponent rules tells you that when I make that parentheses I'm still gonna be multiplying the 3 times the 1 half so it's gonna work to get me back to the 3 halves alright so now 4 raised to the 3 4 raised to the 3rd would give me a 64 and I still have that 1 half on the outside and having an exponent of a 1 half is the same thing as having the square root so we're going to have the square root of 64 and that's just 8 so now I know that instead of writing 4 raised to the 3 halves my answer is just 8 so 4 raised to the 3 halves is the same exact thing as 8 I realize you can't see the side work there we go the side work is on, on the bottom okay so that's one way of doing it now what if I'm gonna put or what if I decided to go the other route so same example you bring this up a little okay or same example separation will be the same but let's say I wanted to work with the one-half first so I'm gonna write 4 raised to the one-half and on the outside I'm gonna put the 3 so I want to deal with the one-half first which means I'm gonna have the square root of 4 first and then I'm gonna cube it the square root of 4 is 2 and 2 cubed equals 8 so exactly the same answer just a different way to do it okay awesome